Good morning, beloved of God. Truly, this is the day that the Lord yes, has made, yeah. and we shall rejoice at the Lord. I don't know about you, but how many of you came to have church this morning? I have a nice day with you. How many of you came to have church this morning? I'm going to ask all of you, you don't mind standing up on your feet as we prepare ourselves for the call to worship. Uh, a little something that I do uh, when I'm at my own place, amen. I ask everybody to raise their hands, amen, showing that universal sign of surrender, amen. You can't worship until we surrender, amen. You can't worship until you surrender. And repeat these words after me. The Lord is my light and my salvation. Whom shall I fear? The Lord is the strength of my life. Of whom shall I be afraid? This is the day. This is the day that the Lord has made. And I will rejoice and be glad in it. Come on, let's put those blessings.
It's the 150th Psalm. And here you find these words recorded. It says, Praise ye the Lord. Praise God in his sanctuary. Praise him in the firmament of his power. Praise him for his mighty acts. Praise him according to his excellent greatness. Praise him with the sound of the trumpet. Praise him with the psaltery and harp. Praise him with the timbrel and dance. Praise him with string instruments and organs. Praise him upon the loud cymbals. Praise him upon the high sounding cymbals. It says, let everything. Let everything that hath breath praise the Lord. Praise ye the Lord. If you're breathing right now, let's give God the highest praise. Hallelujah. 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 Amen. You may take your seat to the presence of the Lord. We want to welcome any guests who are with us this morning. You've graced us with your presence on today. You took time out of your schedule to be a part of this worship experience that the Lord has afforded us. And any uh, of you who are first-time visitors, amen, we want to give a shout. Come on, amen. Then back to the back. We thank God for you. Yes. Amen. Being with us, we love you to life. Amen. Amen. We, we're not loving folk to death. Amen. Amen. Jesus said, I come that you might have life and have it more. Well, I'm in the right space today. Amen. 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 So we praise God for those visitors. Uh, our ushers will take the uh, take the time to give you a little something, something to let you know that we're grateful for your attendance and being with us in uh, this worship encounter. Yes. At this time, we're going to have our church clerk. She's going to come and give us our announcement for the morning. Amen. 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 Good morning, family. Good morning. Good morning. So nice to see you all another day. Uh, first of all, on behalf of Deacon Scott, uh, he wants to thank everyone for who participated in yesterday's community day. Thank all of our cooks, thank all of the servers, all who did clean up, set up. If you participated in any way, he wants to thank you in his absence for all that you did to make it a success. 
Also, for our school supply ministry, uh, Sister Hall, do not want to forget to give you thanks as well. Yesterday, the school supply ministry distributed over 1,500 book bags. There's only 75 remaining. We only have 75 book bags remaining, so thank the school supply ministry and thank all of you who made donations so that they could get this done. So thank you so much for the donations. Don't forget, we just want to remind everyone in case you've missed um, maybe one or two of the last two services, the sermon evaluation form that's on the table outside in the foyer that you picked up, that is for you, uh, that is for your memory of our guest pastor. Make sure that you keep your notes there, but please do not turn in the form to us. We do not need the form back. It is for you to keep. Um, the... September 11th, we will be having a very important mem membership meeting. It will be a congregational meeting immediately following the 11 a.m. worship service. So all of our active members, we ask that you please be uh, in attendance on that day. Uh, Deacon Scott will be discussing some very important information as we move forward in our voting process. So please make sure that you're in attendance. Uh, on this morning, we sent you a very detailed uh, announcement about the Enoch Academy is looking for a teacher. So if you have some credentials, an associate's degree, or a related field, and at least 30 hours, 30 credits, I'm sorry, of field, I mean, 30 credits of um, early childhood education, then please make sure that you speak to Dr. Falk. You can send your transcript to her, I mean, your resume, I'm sorry, your resume to her, and then she will contact you. We provided you with her email address in this morning's email, so don't forget if you're qualified for that position, don't forget to reach out um, and send your resume over to Dr. Falk. Today, um, at, before I take my seat, just to remind you, today nothing will be different. Immediately following this service, we will have a Q&A &A session with Pastor Spurlock. So all of our members, please, if you'd like to remain back, we encourage you to remain back if you have any questions or just to listen to the questions that others may have. So that will follow immediately following this service. Thank you all for your undivided attention, your love, your patience, and may each of you have a very blessed and safe week in the Lord. Amen. We want to thank um, Sister Burnett. Amen for those uh, announcements. We ask that you would, beloved, please uh, keep all of those announcements in mind and govern yourselves accordingly. Amen. Uh, I would like to add that uh, on yesterday, uh, thank you, Enoch, for inviting me uh, to have the opportunity to come and fellowship with you uh, on uh, your back to school explosion that took place here on the grounds. Amen. Yeah. Uh, amen. See, it was a, a powerful event. It was an event that ministered uh, not only to me, but it ministered to my family as well. Amen. <laughs> my wife is here with me along with my daughter. Uh, we all came here. And, uh, we were blessed uh, with the hospitality. Uh, we were blessed, amen. Uh, with the food. Amen. Somebody hung out with Peter and caught some fish. Amen. I walked away with some fish yesterday. All of us, my wife and I and my daughter, we all walked away with some fish. And it was it was awesome. So we were grateful uh, for how uh, you ministered to me and my family, uh, taking time uh, to allow us to come and break bread with you. Uh, so we're grateful for that opportunity took place on yesterday. And I'm certain uh, that uh, young young folk who are getting ready to head back into the classroom, amen, they will be blessed uh, by your generous contributions. They will be blessed by your generous contributions to have a powerful and a successful uh, 2022. 2023 school term. Yes. Yes. Amen. Yes. What you did on yesterday 
and what you shall continue to do uh, will definitely give them what they need in order uh, to be set up for success. And, uh, we're grateful uh, that you had, amen, the heart of Christ. The word says, let this mind be in you. Amen. It's also in Christ Jesus. Amen. So we thank God for your generosity and your, uh, your ability to sow. I'm, I'm going to add, amen, if you uh, did not give to help, amen, I believe, and I might be overstepping my boundaries, but I'm going to do this anyway, because I do things like this. Uh, you can still give something uh, to help somebody, amen. Uh, and the reason why I say that, because somebody helped me, amen, and uh, I believe that somebody uh, still might be out there that need some help. Yeah. Amen. Oh Amen. And, uh, before I leave today, I want to give a little something. Y'all give me your cash out tag. And uh, Sister Spurlock and I will send you something to be able to uh, help some students out. Amen. 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 Praise the Lord. She's, a, she's an educator by trade. Amen. Amen. So uh, she, she served as a principal and, and and things of that nature. She's now director of equity in Loudoun County Public Schools. So she's an educator. And, I, and I'm passionate about education. Uh, and that's why I'm, I'm doing this. If you didn't give any of that, amen, I want you to try to give something. Uh, I also work in the school system where I am. I'm a school security officer. Amen. I, I'm not on. <laughs> But I am licensed to uh, DCJS. Amen. Lord be praised. Amen. So uh, I said all that to say uh, we want our we want our young people, amen, to be set up for success. So at this time, amen, we're going to prepare our hearts and minds, amen, uh, to call on the name of the Lord, amen, for those who are. Uh, uh, challenge and confined. Most people call them uh, sick and shut in. Amen. Amen. Uh, but I believe that, that when it comes down to it, uh, that there's nothing too hard for God. Amen. I, I'm going to ask uh, whatever the protocol will be uh, that we will prepare our spirits. Amen. That we would go into prayer at this time. Amen. So uh, let us go to God in prayer. Father, in the name of Jesus, we thank you, God. Because we know you to be a healer. We know you, oh God, to be a deliverer. We know you to be a way maker. We know you to be a bridge that's over trouble waters. And God, right now, there's somebody that's out there who needs a touch from you. Go, oh God, into the hospitals. Go into the nursing homes. God, go into somebody's home that's lying on his or her bed of affliction. And let them know, God, that you're able. Let them know, God, that, that you can do exceedingly abundant. Above all that we ask and think according to the power that works in us. God, there's no weapon that's formed against us that shall prosper. Now, 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 I want you to know that weapons will fall, but the word says that they shall not prosper. So God, we thank you right now that you're able to hold back the weapons that you're able to set free to heal and deliver move by your power divine God we're not going to wait for it to 
be done. We're going to go ahead and do it in faith. Because the word says that faith cometh by hearing. And hearing by the word of God. So God, we're going to pull out our debit card faith. And we're going to go ahead and swipe it across. And we know that we got the authorization. We're going to go ahead and give you some glory right now.
to myself but to bring glory to your name you said in your word that men are saved by the foolishness of preaching so make me a fool right now somebody needs this word because you said in your word that your word is a lamp unto our yeah. feet yeah. and a light unto our path. You told us in your word that no good thing will you with from us who desire to walk up. Your word is a balm in Gilead. Your word heals. It delivers. So set free right now. By the power of your word. And Lord, we'll be careful. To give your name the glory, the honor, and the praise. Because your word. In Jesus' name. By the redeem of the Lord say amen. 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 Turn with me in your Bibles to the gospel according to St. John. John chapter 5, beginning at verse number 1. John 5, beginning at verse number 1. Um, I'll be reading from <clears throat> the New Living Translation, but I'll also reference the New King James as well. And in John's Gospel, the fifth chapter, you'll find these words recorded in your hearing. It says, afterwards, uh, Jesus returned to Jerusalem for one of the Jewish holy days. 
Inside the city near the sheep gate was a pool of Bethesda with five covered porches. Crowds of sick people, blind, lame, or paralyzed, lay on the porches. One of the men lying there had been sick for 38 years. When Jesus saw him and knew he had been ill for a long time, he asked him, would you like to get well? The man said, I can't, sir. The sick man said, well, I have no one to put me into the pool when the water bubbles up. Someone else always get there ahead of me. Jesus told him, stand up. Pick up your mat and walk. Instantly, the man was healed. He rolled up his sleeping mat and began walking. This miracle had happened to the place of the Sabbath. Amen. You may take your seats in the presence of the Lord. With the doubt in the game and the diligent assistance to include the divine anointing of the Holy Spirit, I want to put a tag on this text. I want to preach from the subject. Do you want to be what you ought to be? Do you want to be what you ought to be? Grace, mercy, and peace be unto you, my Father's children. We greet you in Jesus' name as well as in Jesus' joy. My brothers and sisters, beloved of God, I, I am a native of Petersburg, Virginia. In Petersburg, there's a, an army base that's nearby. It's called Fort Lee, Virginia. It's the home of the Quartermaster Corps. Mm. Uh, in, in, at Fort Lee, Quartermaster Corps had people coming uh, from all over the world to learn, uh, if you will, about the ability to distribute supplies and things of that nature. And at Fort Lee, it's significant to my hometown because many people in Petersburg work at Fort Lee. It's also an infrastructure uh, to surrounding areas of the Tri-City area. I grew up <clears throat> around Fort Lee, worked down on Route 36 at a place called Kmart back in the day. I used to make an announcement about the Blue Light Special. And, uh, Right there, where the Kmart, where I worked, Fort Lee was just basically uh, a mile to uh, a mile and a half from the door where I worked. I knew that I wanted to go into the military. I was raised with the mindset that I was going to go into the military. Family members were armed service people who had served in the Navy served in the Air Force and Army. And in high school, I prepared myself for going into the military. I'd taken three years of JROTC. When I got to Virginia State, I was in ROTC there. I knew that I was going to be an officer. I had made it my desire, my life's mission to become an officer in the United States Army. And one day back in 1987, I had an automobile accident. I was with a friend who was test driving a car. Automobile ran off the road. My face hit the windshield. Had to have major reconstructive surgery literally lost my right eye, 
had multiple operations to try to get myself back to a point of a working eye. One day after taking my ASVAB test, I passed and I was getting ready to enlist into the Army National Guard. They told me that I couldn't go because my eyelid was still not fully functional to the point that they didn't want to take a risk on me. It devastated me because I wanted to be an officer. They denied me the opportunity for me to serve my country. Even in college, I went to basic camp at Fort Knox with Roxy and had gone through basic camp for six weeks there. And I told them, I said, the doctor had given me the thumbs up to go to camp. Why couldn't you give me the thumbs up? And the doctor at the MEP station told me, MEP, Military Interest and Processing Station, he said, sir! If we were to send you over into Saudi Arabia with the sandstorms that arise over there, even with the military issued goggles that we give, because your eyelid doesn't close all the way 100%, we would send you into harm's way and do more damage to you because you want to serve. bowed my head, walked in shame, because I knew that I wanted to be what God had ultimately destined me to be. I wanted to be an officer. It was in the plans for me Come on. <laughs> to be an officer, but I also was reminded that I had some preachers in my family. I'm a fourth generation preacher, third generation pastor. As a matter of fact, my uncle used to pastor down here in Virginia Beach back in the 60s, early 70s. Pastored over on Birdneck Road at a church called Mount Olive Baptist Church. Reverend Dr. Harry L. Bass. And I ignored the calling. I shot away from the calling. Yeah, yeah. And then one day, Come on. <laughs> as I was going through life, That's it. the Lord said, you wanted to be an officer. I'm going to make you an officer, but you're going to be an officer in the army of the Lord. I'm going to give you your marching orders. So, when I looked at this text, beloved, I, I saw this text, and this text uh, spoke to me, and I, I believe it's speaking to somebody in here on today. Right. The reason why, because when I read this text, we have a man that's been going to the pool of Bethesda, and it's been for 38 years. 38 years he's been trying to become healed. 38 years. He's been coming and he's been leaving the same way he's been coming. Wow. You know, our former first lady, Michelle Obama, she wrote a book not too long ago, talked about becoming. Yeah, yeah. And I want you to know, beloved, that there are many of you in here that you have not even reached Come on. what God has in store. <laughs> Eyes haven't seen, ears haven't heard, nor has it entered into the heart of man what God has in store for you. Tell your neighbor, say, I'm, I'm in process. I'm in process. I, I'm, I'm getting ready to come. You ain't seen nothing yet. I'm getting ready to become what God wants me to be. Yeah, 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 yeah. I'm, I'm in process, I'm in process. And, and here the Bible says, beloved, the Bible tells us that it was a, 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 it was a feast. One of the religious holy days. And 
This brother came every year. For how many years? 38. 38. I just want to make sure y'all were listening. To me. 38, years. 38 years. And nothing happened. Now, I said I wanted to reference the New King James Version because when I read in the New Living, and you read it also in the New International Version, you'll see in those versions, verse number four is left out. In the King James, in the New King James, verse 4 says, And an angel of the Lord came down and stirred up the world. I, I want you to know that God's doing ready to stir up some stuff. Beloved, is that when you look at this text, text teaches us first and foremost, when you when, when you look at it, do you want to be who you ought to be? You need to understand that there is a season of miracles. Oh that, that, that's right. Every year, Every the year. angel of the Lord, according to the King James and the New King James, says that the angel would come down and stir up. Season. Right now, we're getting ready to transition out of summer season. The air is getting ready to get cool. It's still hot right now. But it's getting ready to get cool. Friday night lights. Football games. Y'all ain't praying. And, and, and we're getting ready to uh, watch, if you will, yes, the, the, the days become short. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, you're gonna pull out your sluts. Yeah. No, ain't yeah. You, you're gonna wear your boots. Yeah. You're gonna pull out your leather coats. Yeah, it, 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 the season is getting ready to change. And the Bible tells us to everything there is a season. And this brother here is a depiction of many of us. Whereas when we come to church, many, many brothers and sisters come to church for months, for years, and their situations have not changed. Huh? And, and this brother here, he's been coming for 38 years with the expectation that he's going to be able to get into the pool. Huh? He, he's one of many. The Bible says that there were many that had disabilities. Huh? Wow. I'm making it up. It's in the text. Let me see if I can make it plain for you. Uh, the word says, yeah, in verse 3, it was a crowd of people. They were sick. They were blind. They were lame. They were paralyzed. And some lay on the porches. I want to let you know that there are some people in this building today that are sick. There's some folk that are blind. There's some folk that are lame. There's some folk that are paralyzed. You might not know it, but come on, you know that all of us got some, some type of illness that we're dealing with. Uh, some of us got ADD and don't even know it. to the pool. He wanted to get a dip 
Just like Naaman got a dip. Y'all know Naaman, don't you? Naaman over in 2 Kings chapter 5, verses 1 through 19. Naaman went to uh, the prophet Elijah and he asked the prophet Elijah to heal him of his leprosy. And, and the prophet told him, why don't you go down to the river, Jordan? And go down and dip seven times. And Naaman thought that he was better than the Jordan River. And what I need you to understand, beloved, many of us need to take a dip every now and then. Oh yeah, we need to take a dip. We need, we need to take a dip into the Word. We need, we need to take a dip where we get more of Him and less of social media. We need to take a dip where we get more of the Lord and less of P Valley. Situation is getting ready to change. I told you one, it's a, it's a season for the miracles. But then two, I want to also point out that his support system had a malfunction. Huh? I ain't making it up. Jesus asked him, Do you want to be made whole? And the man says, Sir. I don't have anything to put me into the pool. When the water gets stirred, I ain't got nobody. Can, can, I, can I just be informal just for a little bit? Use some broken English. Y'all know He said, I ain't got nobody that can put me into the pool. somebody to put him there. Oh, I, I see something. Because what I've discovered is sometimes we got to stop expecting people to do stuff for us. And do for ourselves. You know, the Bible tells us if, 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 if you don't work, you don't eat. You can't depend on nobody to feed you. You need to do something for yourself. And, and, and the word says, look, look, look. He says, I don't have anybody that can put me there. Jesus, the Bible says in verse 5 that Jesus saw the man and knew that he had been there for 38 years. Jesus knew that this man had a mouth. Right. He had discerned that he had an ailment, a disease. And Jesus' omniscience picked up on it. And then Jesus said, do you want to be made whole? Huh? Jesus was telling him in so many words, I'm going to hook you up. Because your malady has caused you to be here for 38 years and nothing's changed. I know this has been going on. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to change your mindset. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I'm going to change your mindset to the point that we're going we gonna to get this thing hooked up. That you don't have to always be wanting for somebody to do something for you. The master asked and the man answered. The man gave an excuse. But Jesus encouraged. Yeah, yeah. The man talked about his plight, right. but Jesus persuaded. Yeah. The man referenced his pain, and Jesus basically told him to persevere. Yeah. The man basically spoke that he had a burden, but Jesus said, I'm going to give you a breakthrough. Yeah. Here it is. 
It is. And I remember there was some years ago when I was in uh, seminary at Virginia Union, and I'd taken up a class on, uh, the, if you will, on Christian education. And there was a book that we used. Uh, it was by a gentleman by the name of Israel Galindo. And in his book called The Craft of Christian Teaching, he stated that change takes place in two domains. It's in one's attitude and one's behavior. And this is what he said. He says that when it comes to change, it's like an algebraic equation. The, the word change has the letter C. So he made it an algebraic equation. C equals B over, which is behavior, over A for attitude. Yeah. And what he's saying is when your attitude changes, yeah. when your behavior changes, yeah. you can see a change in your overall yeah. disposition. Yeah. So what he was trying to let us know that when it comes to this man here in the text, that we need to lift up his mindset. Yeah. And his mindset will get his physical plight to an opportunity where the Lord can do some great things for him. All right, all right, all right. So whereas the man was looking at his support system, and he basically said that it had malfunctioned, Jesus said, I'm going to show you that it's really in operational status. Ah, here it is, here it is. So, text teaches us support system had a malfunction. Yeah, yeah. Text teaches us also that there was a season for miracles. All right. But then thirdly and lastly, I want to let you know that the text points out the supernatural manifestation. Yeah. Here it is. Supernatural manifestation is when the natural is on the collision course with the supernatural. Oh my God. And when the supernatural collides with the natural, we become the beneficiaries like this brother of what we can articulate in that hymn that we used to sing in the church. It is no secret what God can do. What he's done for others, surely he can do with you. With his arms wide open, the Lord will pardon you. For it is no secret what God can do. See, this brother, he was always coming to, if you will, the pool or the mat. But now when he meets Jesus, he's, after he's had this encounter with Jesus, now he's carrying the mat. Oh, okay. He's transporting what he once was carried on. No, I ain't praying with Y'all remember when David was carrying, the, uh, when David was transporting the Ark of the Covenant? Yeah. And he was transporting it using the ox. And one day when they were transported, the, uh, the Ark of the Covenant hit a bump in the road right. at Nacon's threshing floor. Y'all know what I'm talking about. Right? And there was a brother by the name of Uzzah who put his hand out and he had good intentions. Y'all ain't preaching. And Uzzah ended up dying. Because he touched the Ark of the Covenant. And the reason Uzzah died was because of the fact that David transported it the wrong way. And when, when, when David left the Ark of the Covenant down at Obed-Edom's house, and Obed-Edom's house stopped getting blessed, he came to his senses like a prophet. And then he decided, you know what, I'm going to do this thing the right way. What I'm trying to suggest to you is that there comes a time when when you transport the things of God, you got to do it the way how God wanted you to do it. So this brother was being carried on the map, but Jesus said, I'm going to show you that what you came in on is what you're going to carry out. So now we see the transport. But then we see the transformation. Because Jesus said, do you want to be made whole? And Jesus said, rise. Pick up your bed. And walk. No, they didn't get that. Rise. Pick up your bed. And walk. Y'all still didn't get that.
good afternoon. Come on. Come on. And may the Lord God bless each and every one of you yeah. real good. Yeah. I, I told you there was the transport, there was the transformation, but then there is the triumphant. Yeah. Because this man who once could not get into the pool has now started walking. And the Lord did this for him to let him know that it, regardless of how long it takes, just trust in the Lord with all thy heart and lean not to your own understanding, but in all thy ways. Acknowledge him yes. and he shall direct your path. Can I give him this? Yes. You see, on my way down here, I was in the car and just before I merged on 95 the other day, I got a call from my son's coach. My son plays for Coppin State University and he's a sophomore. And last year, he had started his freshman campaign of Division I basketball. And his coach is Warren Dixon, who used to play for the University of Maryland. And Coach Dixon said to me, Father Spurlock is what he called me. He said, Dad, he said, I want you to know, he said, when you come to the games this year, you're not going to recognize your son. I said, what are you saying, Coach? He said, he got it. I said, what you mean he got it? He said, when he steps on the floor, he said, he's going to be better than what you ever thought he was. He said, so you just wait and see. He said, it had to click with him. He said, it was just a process. And when I was thinking about what he told me, I thought about this man in the text. It was just a process. It, it, it took him 38 years, but it was a process. How many of you know that some of you are still here today because somebody prayed for you? The prayers of the righteous have been keeping you, and it's been a process. Uh, yeah, my wife had on this shirt the other day, and I've been sleeping in a shirt similar to hers. And it said, yes, I don't lose. Yeah, I either win or I learn. It's a quote by Nelson Mandela. And I want somebody to know that you are winning today. I told the church to be. I said that we are about winning on this side of the track. Can I get a witness in the building? Rely on God's promises. Wait on God's time. Believe in his miracles. Rejoice in his goodness. And relax in his presence. Because the Bible says, come near to God. And he will come near to you. So beloved, hang in there. Whether it's 38 years. 38 months. 38 weeks, 38 days, or 38 minutes, stay in the race. Don't get tired. Don't get away. Tell somebody, send Mary Book. I'm going to be what the Lord destined me to be. No longer will I be in chains.
about the malfunction of somebody taking it. You know what? Just be flexible. Be flexible. Because in your flexibility, you what you do is you activate your faith. That, that, that's it. Your flexibility activates your faith. I've learned that regardless of what you plan, <laughs> what you plan, may not be what God the word says that his ways are not our ways and his thoughts are not our thoughts malfunction he was concerned about the malfunction somebody did in there but check it out he didn't have to jump into the pool all he did was have a conversation with Christ yes yes they got healed, but he got hope. That's it. Wow. So I open the doors of the church to you today. Beloved, do you want to be what you are? Yes, yes. This is your moment. This is your hour. This is your season. Why don't you come? If you don't know Jesus today in the pardon of your sin, why don't you come? We extend the invitation. Stand on your feet all over the church. If you've never given your life to the Lord, I want you to come up here. Never given your life to the Lord. Come, come. If you're here, You've been in Christ, but you've been out of fellowship. Hmm. You've been in church, been in church, and there are a lot of people who are out there that have been hurt because of the church. Amen. Well, well, I'm learning that there's a lot of church hurt going around. So I want to suggest to you that. Let's flip the script on church hurt and let's start operating with a kingdom mindset. Amen. The church is an apparatus to introduce you to the kingdom. Jesus said, upon this rock I'll build my church and the gates of hell shall not prevail against it. He gave his life for the church, but Jesus also reminded us that he was here for the express purpose to introduce the kingdom of God to us. Yes, yes. The church is to be operating in concert on behalf of the kingdom. Yes. So we're here today to introduce the kingdom. Yes. If you've been out there, you've been hurt. Come. If you're out there and you want to rededicate your life, As we're getting ready to go into this season of fall, as we're getting ready to close out the 2022 year, this is your time, your, your moment to reconnect, yeah. to get hooked up with Christ yeah. so that as you start your 2023, 
It'll be set up in such a way that you would place yourself on the trajectory for a greater tomorrow. Not to say that you won't have some difficult days, but when you have Christ with you during those difficult days, he will help you to endure while you go through what you go through. So, I extend that invitation to you. There might be someone out there who's dealing with the loss of a loved one. Who's had it rough. And you've probably grown up. Grown up your faith and said, you know what, I'm tired. I'm tired of hearing that it's going to get better. I'm tired of hearing that the Lord knows what's best. I know how you feel. I just lost my sister back in May. Stage four breast cancer. Age 50. She was married. Left behind two children. 15 and 11. And every day I wake up wanting to know why God. Why? Why'd you take my sister? And there's times when I'm like, what's the purpose for preaching? What's the purpose for ministry? God said to me, there's somebody out there that's going through what you've gone through. So I need you to be able to put on your big boy pants and be able to let them know that earth has no sorrow. I'm here today on divine assignment to be able to help somebody in their path, their journey. Every message ain't about shouting. But there are messages that are designed to help you grow. To help you become better. This man met Jesus. And he had put all his capital into somebody. Helping him get into the pool. Jesus said, no. Here's the deal. Do you want to be made whole? Right. Pick up your bed and walk. So I submit to you, rise, Enoch. Pick up your bed and walk. Choir is going to minister through song. If there's somebody out there, we're waiting on you. We're not going to cut you off. Because this is a divine moment. And this decision that you make is one that's going to be predicated on how you will continue to live your life with Christ. We support you. You got a family here that's willing to walk with you to help you through Tough times. Why don't you come? Let us pray. Father, in the name of Jesus, I thank you, thank you. for the blessings of the day. Thank you, Lord, for speaking to me and speaking through me. Touch every worship under the sound of my voice. Bless the praise team who will continue to minister. Bless those who will give their gifts as we get ready to bring closure to today's service. We honor you with the fruit of our lips. We bless you, O oh God, with our hallelujahs and amen. And we say thank you, because there's none like you in all the world. It's in your name, the name of Yeshua, Jesus Christ, the anointed one, the Christos Curios. We declare and decree these things that for those who love the Lord, say amen. 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 You may take your seats in the presence of the Lord. Choir will minister. And then we're
we get ready to prepare ourselves to bring our gifts to the Lord.